Hey, and welcome back to the channel. My name is Alexander, and I'm a guitarist, composer, and overall music nerd from Copenhagen, Denmark. And in this video, we are checking out yet another rocker verb tone using the 96 Helix. Enjoy! Alright, so very much in style with last week's video where I did a rocker verb rhythm tone, today we're checking out a rocker verb lead tone. And of course, the rocker verb was added to the Helix in the 3.1 or 3.11 it's called now because of stuff uh, and I thought I would keep the ball rolling from last week with the Mastodon stuff so I did a cool little impro solo over one of the cool riffs. Okay it may be the best Mastodon riff ever actually so I'm sorry I ruined it with a mediocre solo. <laughs> As always there's a lot of cool links down in the description and I would be really grateful if you would consider checking them out. There's links to the Helix preset sites where I sell all of my bundles, this one included, and of course also my subscription service with all of my guitar courses and composition courses. Alright, so before we dive into the walkthrough of the tone in Helix Edit, let's take a look at the demo. Right, so we're here in Helix Edit, and as I said, it's uh, very similar to what I did last week. It's actually built upon the sort of same preset, or it is basically the same, and all I did is basically adding some um, some wet effects in the end. Uh, and I'm not sure I changed much of the settings because it actually sounded very good for this kind of um, rocky uh, sort of classic uh, metal, or however you would go about it, lead tone, right? So you don't need to... Um, to change too much what, what was actually there. And uh, if I didn't say it last week, I'm gonna say it now, the Rockerverb amp is uh, amazing and it sounds really great. Uh, unfortunately, it uh, swallows quite a lot of DSP. Uh, I read 36% or something somewhere. I don't know if that's true, but it is very DSP heavy. And of course, as you can see on the screen, this is not a HX stomp um, preset. And I am, of course, sorry about that. I will uh, get to making a, a HX stomp friendly preset sometime. Okay, so let's just start at the very beginning. Uh, noise gate or input gate is of course on, minus 45 dB, fairly standard for me. Then we have this dual uh, distortion or drive pedal in front of the amp, right? So we have the Tima, and you can see the settings here. You can pause if you want. And we have the Screamer 808. The Screamer 808 is fairly standard for me, uh, but I figured I would uh, try out something new uh, once in a while. You have to do that, right? Uh, and um, I plucked the Tima in front of it because it has this uh, bass and treble cut and the uh, clipping option. And um, I thought that would sound good. And it did. Uh, so you can see the settings here, right? Fairly standard. Then we get a second noise gate because it got a little noisy. Minus 60.5 dB, so fairly... Um, conservative, right? Just to take that little extra uh, noise that comes out when you have a dual drive pedal set up, right? And then we go into a compressor standard, the um, the deluxe compressor, and you can see the settings there, right? I think it's basically the uh, the default settings, right? And then we have the dual amp setup, and you can see the settings for amp number one here, the Mandarin rocker, right? And as I also explained in uh, last week's video, the sort of um, thought process with this is like with having dual caps that we have one amp that takes care of most of the treble stuff or the high-end stuff and then we have another amp here amp number two and you can see the settings here as well that is more bass heavy or more low end heavy right and when you blend those two together you get a really sort of a bigger and more more awesome sound right and um, it's like blending cabinets with different mics right it just it sounds a lot fuller and you can you can get the the good characteristics of uh, both sides of the amp or the cap in that matter, right? So uh, that is the dual amp. Then we uh, send them both down to path A and path B, right? And in uh, one of them, we have this uh, 4x12 Mandarin, uh, <clears throat> which I assume is uh, the orange PVC uh, 4x12. 
Uh, and as you can see here, it's a 57. You can see the settings here, fairly standard, right? Uh, maybe I would bump up the low cut uh, a bit, uh, thinking about it now. Uh, and the second one might with a, a 121 ribbon, right? So again, this same principle of uh, capturing the high end frequencies with one cap or one mic <laughs> and uh, capturing the low end frequencies with the other mic, right? Right, so the more exciting stuff after the cabinets, they uh, sort of go back together into this uh, main path, right? And then we have a parametric EQ, and you can see the settings for that here. It's a, f a fairly standard uh, parametric EQ compared to what I usually do uh, with lead stuff and uh, stuff like that. Of course, maybe you have different preferences or you play through a different rig or a different guitar and you have different hands than I do. Uh, so this uh, may be different, right? Uh, and this is a fairly good place, I feel, to to tweak the tone more to your liking. Uh, of course, you can play around with the settings on the amps and stuff like that. Um, but I feel like the sort of uh, ground or the sort of baseline of this sound is really good. Uh, so if you want a bit more uh, high end or you feel it's a bit too shrill or something like that, it's better, in my opinion, uh, in this case at least, to, to play around with the parametric EQ or add a tilt EQ or something like that, uh, so you don't mess around too much with um, what goes on in uh, in all of the sort of main stuff, but you can you can tweak and fix things uh, a little bit later on in the chain, right? Okay, so um, the main uh, attraction <laughs> in this preset that really sets it aside from last week's uh, preset is of course the uh, weight effects in the end, because when we play lead stuff, we want some room, we want some delay, and, and stuff like that, right? You can of course add uh, different modulations and whatever you need this for later on, right? But uh, my favorite delay pedal, uh, these days at least, the transistor tape, and you can see the settings here. Fairly straightforward, right? You can tweak this to whatever um, song you need and whatever tempo and stuff like that. But I feel like the transistor tape is, in my opinion, is the best delay pedal there is in the uh, Line 6. I use it for basically everything un unless I need something very specific, right? Um, it just feels like it, I just feel like it sounds really great, and uh, it's not too much. Some delays are sort of too extreme in the effect that they uh, produce, or they are simply too yeah too hard to to fit in. Right, this preset is made um, for playing with my band, so it needs to be not so super extreme or super trivial. Right, of course you can go there with the Cosmos uh, Echo or something like that. Right. All right, so for the reverb, I used the new Dynamic Hall reverb. And uh, of course, uh, the new ones that were added are the Dynamic Hall and the Hot Springs. Uh, and I used the Dynamic Hall for this, and it's, yeah, it's amazing. I think it's my, my new favorite uh, reverb uh, pedal or reverb effect in the Line 6. I actually am very used to going back to the, uh, the Legacy ones. Uh, I had that Pudge HD 500 before, and I feel like uh, those reverbs, uh, and they're not exactly the same, of course, they are, they are modified to fit the Helix hardware and stuff like that. But those kind of effects are actually uh, my go-to. But I have been convinced um, for the Dynamic Hall and also uh, in part the Hot Springs, I need to play around with that some more. But I was never a fan of the, uh, the five uh, that were there from the beginning. I just feel like they were, yeah, they were just not my kind of style, but the Dynamic Hall, it is, the shit. Sorry for my language. And of course, you can see the settings here if you haven't already. And then lastly, we use the retro reel. And this was also a uh, addition in the new update. And yeah, again, like the um, like last work, last works, <laughs> last week's uh, video and um, and that preset. It's the same sort of. Uh, I think this is the exact same settings as well. But it's the same sort of principle. It acts like a uh, compressor bus or a bus uh, compressor of some sort, right? It just sort of glues uh, the things together, make the good parts sound better, make the bad parts lower, and it just brings out something very subtle, but uh, if you try to toggle it on and off while you play or while you record something, it just adds some some warmth or some kind of tape uh, emulation kind of sound, right? And um, in my opinion, it, it made the entire preset sound better, and um, I probably will never play without it again. So that is uh, all for this preset. Let's head into the outro. 
All right, guys, so that is all for this week's video. Thank you very much for checking it out. I hope that you enjoyed the preset and you can use some of the tips and tricks I showed in this video to make your own awesome presets. As always, feel free to subscribe to the channel, like the video, say hi to me down in the comments, or maybe share the video with a friend who would also enjoy this preset. Of course, down in the description, all of the links, I would be super grateful if you would check them out. You can purchase all of my Helix preset packs, or you can sign up for my subscription service with all of my guitar courses. So that is all for this week. Stay healthy and stay safe out there. Until next time, I will see you.